Hi guys. There's something I've been wanting to do for a really long time, but it looked really, really difficult. Um, I did some research, found out that it's not. The hardest thing is actually saying it. Today I'm making a kokodama. I think I said that right. If you don't know what a kokodama is, it's basically a moss ball with a plant inside of it. And you can display it this way or you can hang it. Um, so I am going to break down the process for you and show you how easy it is. And um, we have all of the supplies that you need and we will actually have a display um, of all those products. You can come in and grab them real quick and head out. Um, this is a great project for some of your older children. Um, you know, like eight and up maybe. It's a little messy, but it's super fun um, and it'll really help them get into gardening um, and enjoy something inside their house this time of the year. It's messy, I'm going to warn you. Um, so the products that we need um, are going to be peat moss, some bonsai soil. Um, you can mix the bonsai with a regular potting soil as well, um, but you do need kind of that gritty base and I'll show you that in a minute. And then some um, regular green sheet moss. We have all of those products in stock. That's your base. And then you pick out your plant. So there's numerous different options for plants that you can use. Um, the one that I showed you was an ivy. Um, I liked that only because I can take some of the longer uh, stems and wrap it in and, and I use some uh, floral wire, just kind of tuck it to the moss ball itself and it'll root. Thought it looked really cool, but you could do anything. So this is one of the little fairy plants, which um, is kind of trailing. Um, I thought that would look cool off the top. You could certainly do with succulents. Um, this one here happens to be a burrow's tail, which I thought would look kind of neat coming off of the top of it as well. Or a basic spider plant. The choice is yours. Um, the other thing that you need is some, I am using some, um, this is a waxed twine, um, but you could use other things. Um, I just happen to have this, so that's what I'm using, but you could use um, jute twine if you have that. This is your regular brown. Uh, we also have it in um, green. You could use um, a strong yarn if you have that as well um, or we do have some black uh, which will blend in with the moss as well but you can use anything you're just holding that moss in place that's all you're doing okay so let's get started um, today I'm going to do a small fern uh, one of the little bambinos this is a um, one of the Boston ferns and I just thought that would look so cute so that's the one we're gonna do today so I'm just gonna set him over here the other things that you're gonna need is <clears throat> some water and some containers. So the first thing that I did was um, I had one waterproof container and I added water to it and I soaked my moss. Um, get that soaking so it's nice and pliable. Um, this is what it looks like once it's wet. It's nice bright green and it'll hold that green color for quite a while. Um, I love that sheet moss. I always have some hanging around at the house. Okay, so then the next container you're going to take and I've already done this for you, but it's super easy. Um, basically, you're going to take uh, even parts of peat moss and bonsai soil. So I did three to three. I used this container here to measure it out with. I just scooped it out of the bag, threw it in there. The other thing you're going to need is some water because we have to moisten it before we actually create the, um, the base of the ball or the kokidama. Um, so some water available as well as to kind of dip your hands in because this is messy I'm warning you it's messy so we're going to add the water to the peat moss and the bonsai mixture we don't want it soaking wet although I did over wet this and it still worked uh, when I made my ivy um, you just squeeze the water out so the size of the ball is going to be determined by the size of the pot or the plant that you're going to be planting inside of it um, so this is a little one. So I'm going to make probably like a baseball size ball around there. All right. So once we have it all mixed up and it's damp, we're just going to scoop it out with our hands and get really dirty because this is the fun part. And we're going to continue to squeeze this together until you create a nice solid ball that isn't crumbling apart. Just keep going back and forth. Squeeze out any extra moisture if there's some in there. Make it nice and tight. Neatness is not important with this because we're gonna wrap it with the moss. So you're really not gonna tell if there's lumps and bumps, but you do want it nice and solid and tight. And so you can kind of see where I'm going with that. Um, you're just making mud balls, guys. This is super fun and messy, which I love. I love getting dirt under my fingernails this time of the year. 
So anyway, we're gonna keep compressing that. If you need to add more, you can certainly add some more and pack it on there. But I think I'm good with this one here. So we're just gonna put this aside for a second, just like that, okay? And then we're gonna take our plant. Now you can get it prepped beforehand if you want to, um, but I wanted to go through the whole process with you guys. So take it out of its little pot. And what we wanna do is remove some of the soil from um, the roots themselves. It just makes it a little bit easier to get it inside of that ball. So basically, we're just going to tease some of that soil out. And we wanna to try to not damage the roots too much, although it's inevitable when you're doing something like this, but we don't wanna rip, uh, rip it apart. Just gently tease that soil out as best you can. Make a mess, that's what it's all about. Uh, protect your work surface. Um, I suggest doing this maybe in a garage if you have younger kids, cause it, like I said, it's pretty messy. Um, but cleaning up the mess is part of the fun too. All right, so I think we're good. Now there's some of the um, information that I saw that if it's a larger plant, um, I like doing smaller ones cause they're easier to place. But if you're doing a larger one, you may have to bind the roots. Um, and so you would do that with any kind of a cotton, um, cotton string or cotton twine, and you would just bind the roots a little bit. Using the smaller ones, we don't have to do that because they are small enough, we can tuck it inside the ball. So let me show you that process. All right, we're gonna go back to our little mud ball and we're going to very carefully break it in half. Just like that, okay? Carefully put one side down, pick up my little fern, and I'm just pressing it in there gently. We don't want to damage that side of the ball. So I'm going to take the other ball and we're just going to squeeze them together, just like that. Pull that um, potty mix all the way around best you can, just sealing up those cracks. All right, we're halfway there, you guys. All right, so I'm just gonna set my little fern right there while I grab some of the, um, the damp sheet moss. So you're gonna take out a piece that, if you can find one that's big enough. If not, you can piece them together. Um, and we're going to squeeze out the majority of the moisture we don't want it soaking wet, but we want it damp. All right, just like that. Unfold it. We're gonna take that moss and we're gonna lay it on our surface. Make sure there's no sticks or anything in there that might poke through um, and ruin the integrity of the outside of the ball. All right, so just like that. And we're gonna carefully pick up our mud ball. And we're gonna place it right in the middle, just like that. And it's gonna stand up, okay. The next thing we're gonna do is we need to cut off a long enough piece of twine or string or whatever your binding material is. Um, <clears throat> so I am going to just pull off maybe a yard or so and clip it. Keep that nearby. And then we're ready to wrap. <laughs> it's messy, you guys. Okay, so we're just going to simply take our moss, pull it up, and kind of tuck it. All right. And when we do the wrapping is where you're gonna see where these little gaps are gonna be filled in. So see how I just kind of tucked that? You just wanna make sure that there's moss covering every part of the soil. Spin that around. See how there's kind of a gap? So we're just gonna kinda of tuck that moss in and up. All right. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. You, I prefer to do a flat bottom because I like to sit these. So I kinda of squish it down just a little bit. So as you can see, it now has a nice flat bottom on it. 
so when I wrap it, it's going to keep that flat bottom. You can make it more rounded if you want to hang them. Um, I've seen where um, you take the uh, same string that you use to wrap it around and you create like a three-tiered little string um, hanger for the top and then you could hang them in a window if you wanted to. All right, so what we're gonna do is grab our twine. The moss kind of stays in place, so that's what's nice about it being moist. So we're gonna just wrap around the top of it first and I'm just going to do one and I'm going to just do a simple knot. Now we don't want to strangle the plant. We don't want to do it too tight, just tight enough to hold the moss in place. So I'm doing a double knot there and it's really just going to hold it um, so you can work with it. The next part is where you can get kind of creative. All right, there's that. I'm just going to trim off the little tail just like that. All right, so as far as wrapping goes, you can you can spiral, spiral it around the ball itself. You can kind of go up and down and around. Um, you could cover the majority of the moss itself. I've seen some where they took the jute twine and they made like a thick row of jute around the top of it, um, which looked kind of neat. Um, I think if you're gonna do more than one, then maybe do some of those accents. It would look really cool when they're all together. Um, so the wrapping process. I'm just going to take my twine and I start by going down and around, trying not to get the, um, the fern under it and just keep wrapping. And I like mine to be kind of messy. Not too tight, just tight enough to hold the moss in place. Wrap it around a few times, come up and around. And you wanna try to end it where you can tie it in somewhere. So I'm just gonna tuck it under here. And I'm gonna do just a quick little knot. I'm not doing it um, other than to hold the string in place. And that is it. So you don't have to get fancy, although you could use some sailor's knots if you wanted to. So get it nice and tight. And I'm just gonna tuck that under or you could cut that tail. That's all there is to it, you guys. Just like that. How beautiful is that? So you can plan on your plant to live about um, probably two years like this um, before it would need to be removed from the moss or if you use a string that um, would decompose or break down, you could plant the whole thing right into a pot and then the roots would come out of the moss itself. Um, I can see these in so many different situations. So, um, you saw the first one, my ivy, put this over here, where I did it just on, uh, simply on a terracotta tray with some stones um, to water. I would just use my watering can and I'm gonna water towards the top where I know that the moisture is going to go down to the root system itself. Um, but I thought this was super simple and cute. And like I said, with the ivy, I like that one because I could take the longer pieces and I can wrap it around to hold them in place. I just took some floral, wire i made a u out of it and tucked it in there so it held that um that stem in place and with ivies as you know they will root so i thought that was kind of neat um <clears throat> it kind of creates a human environment with the moss being um, moist around the plant itself which is why it's great for ferns but as i said you could do it with succulents you can do it with anything really um, big small it doesn't really matter um, but my plan for this one um i envision these on like a cake stand you know we're not supposed to be eating cake because it's january we're all supposed to be you know dieting uh so what are you gonna do with this cake stand stick one of these under it how cool would that be and then that would create that terrarium type of uh environment i can see even uh if you have something um like one of those indoor little glass greenhouses i can see a couple of these in there all different sizes different plants it would look so cool with some like fancy stones around the base of it. I love that. But look at this. Dina brought this in for me to use. This is a little cloach. It's just going to go under like that. It's going to create its own human environment. How cool is that? Is that not a statement piece? I love that. I think it looks fantastic. So we're going to have everything for you here to put together your own Kokoyama. Um, if you have any questions, ask Dina or I or any of the girls here. We all can kind of uh, walk you through it. Fun, fun project for you, for the kids, 
Get your hands dirty, you guys. It's winter, it's gonna be a long time. We're gonna be looking at this inside, wishing to get outside. Stop in and see us. We'll see you soon, have a great day.